On today's episode of Snail Racing, we're going to talk about semi-float Toyota axles, changing the bearings, uh, building a bearing tool, and working it in a little press work. Uh, my buddy Daniel is going to be here shortly, and we'll show you the difference between a uh, old school Toyota axle and the new ABS axles. Uh, just the little differences they have and the nuances to get these swapped apart. Uh, we'll show you the tools, the press work, and uh, that's it. All right, I've got my uh, buddy Daniel here. He brought over this axle to uh, use the press work, and he brought the ABS axle so we can kind of talk about the differences between these earlier and later ones. Uh, as mentioned, this is a early style semi float, say like 79 through 95 uh, four wheel drive, two wheel drive axles. Um, basically, what we've got going on in this hole is uh, single seal roller bearing, the retainer collar, and then a snap ring, which may or may not be necessary. But anyway, Basically, the way these come apart is you pull that snap ring out of there uh, with a set of pliers or whatnot. The snap ring, the snap ring. If that ring is caught up in there for whatever reason, I recommend using like a hammer and a punch to free it up and get it to turn out of there. Uh, it's also handy to have like a little screwdriver or pick to help finesse it out of the hole. Yes. I guess. Uh, so that's pretty basic. And really kind of what we're talking about here, more or less, is you can see this has got the ABS reluctor ring on there and an additional retainer. Uh, and the retainer is actually a sealing surface. You can see the seal line on here, so it's critical that these pieces go back where they start from, <clears throat> otherwise you're gonna have another leaking axle. Anyway, so when you look at the factory service manual with this, to get this number, they're trying to get you to measure from the wheel mate surface, which, nah, it's kind of lame with the backing plate in a way. You need a large set of calipers for that. Yeah, special tool. So basically, we go ahead and use the redneck special tool called a tape measure. And what we recommend you do on these, because these are going to vary year to year, uh, we recommend that you measure from, you know, the top or the back of that retainer to the top of the spline to get your yeah. number. And on this particular one, we're like just short of 24 and a half. Obviously, that's going to vary by model. So take that number, write it down. You know how it is. Measure fucking 15 times, cut once. And um, that pretty much sums it up. You got any other factoids you need to add to this? No, nope, it's a lot harder to get to the uh, snap ring on the ABS. Oh, that's access. right. We didn't talk about this. But you have to remember to remove it <clears throat> before you try to press. So this is assembled essentially the same way. You have the bearing, the collar, and then you have a snap ring. And then we have the additional ABS reluctor ring and the sealing surface retainer uh, is what that is. So note there is no snap ring here. It is tucked underneath there. So it can be tricky to get out of there and depending on what your budget, et cetera, et cetera, is you can cut those rings off, okay? But those reluctant rings are like 40, 50 bucks from the steeler. And you know, if you can get them off without destroying them, why, why do it? Work smarter, not harder is what we talk about around here. And uh, now we're gonna go to the press. So, basically what we do here is we build our special service tool, and you can build this one way or another, but this is just built out of a scrap axle housing that we had lying around. It's got the pocket for the ABS and all that stuff, whereas this old school tool obviously doesn't, so I unfortunately had to build a new tool. Uh, I've begun building another press tool to do the infamous Toyota rear axle bearings. Anybody who has done these knows they are not fun. So right here is an old tool I built for the old early stuff. Uh, you can look at the end of that. And what we're doing today is building a tool for Tacoma, 4Runner, etc. with the ABS wheel inside. Basically what the difference is, you can see this depth here. You can't get it into that axle housing without kind of monkeying around. So I've already cannibalized this third gen 4Runner axle housing and more or less stripped it all down. I figured I'd put my mask on before I blind myself because that's pretty typical. I couldn't see out of a regular overhead hood so I bought one of these little kind of Darth Vader looking mini hood things. And I personally like this better, you know, may or may not fit your bill but it allows me to get my head in places and you can just temp it up real quick if you need to, you know. It's got five speeds, and anyway, I like it a lot better than the other uh, Hobart flip hood that I had, so. There she is, all bird poopy for you. 
pretty simple design and yeah now I'm in it a couple hours but it pays for itself the first time it's used so if you've got a bent or whatever housing lying around chop it up make tools makes your life better and so it takes a little bit of finagling to get this assembly in there and really I mean kind of regardless of what you're gonna do you're gonna have to finagle this one way or another so basically the way that this goes in we have to install the axle underneath of this thing So, and since we're using the axle housing, it basically just assembles like you're putting it into your truck. Just go ahead and use your bolts that you took off when you took the axle out and mount it up to this press jig. Mini walk A. As I said, joys of. But wait a minute, what does this beat? The shit out of dropping this on the ground 800 times to get it apart. <laughs> Insert Josh's video here. <laughs> Alright, we got pressure. Ooh. Make sure you're wearing your safety glasses. bits Tiny and ring. as mentioned we want to save the reluctor ring the retainer collar rings get tossed I'm gonna go ahead and seat the bearing all the way into the pocket to begin with. Life easier in the long run. No tap tap rune. <laughs> Straight slides right out like butter. Swish. It didn't even. It didn't even. Let's. Matrix is awesome. Alright, so when you go back together, you need to be conscious of the way that things came apart. Obviously, the bearing goes on there, and then your first collar, and our snap ring, your ABS reluctor, and then finally your last retainer seal surface. These all need to be basically pressed on one at a time. Okay, so here we go. You've got your axle surface cleaned off, the bearing goes on there. Which kind of brings us to our next point. Everything is always super dope to have a nice press and everything. No one really tells you, you need press tooling. So, use a length of pipe. I use uh, bearing races, but... 
If you mess around and get stupid, bearing races can explode, so just be aware. So a little tricky part right here is pulling this out, dropping all those races out to get the next press piece up in there. So, should be the collar, the taper goes to the inside, which is towards the spline. The taper goes towards the axle spline. Everyone thinks being a mechanic is glorious. There's no glory. No glory. Just grease, blood. <laughs> Don't forget all the tears. That's right. If there's no blood, you ain't doing it right. At this point, we got to yard it out and put the snap ring in. Or I guess we can just snap it in like that, eh? Yeah, push it on right enough. It's a little tapping in. A little tap, tap a rooney. Let's push on with those collars. Yeah. Okay. So we can see the bearing and that first retainer snap ring pulled into place. Uh, these can be, these other collars can be pressed on, but you kind of need to keep it, uh, make sure your distance is proper. So they can be tapped on there with a collar and a hammer. So we just kind of put them on from the outside to begin with here. Booyah. Same time too? Just one at a time. And mind you, you've got a tiny bit of leeway with that. If you're in doubt, uh, install the axle, axle housing, put a little grease on there, turn it, pull it, uh, and it'll show you where your, what do they call that? A reveal? Reveal mark? Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the middle here. Yeah, on the ceiling surface. Uh, because of the way that the ABS housings are designed, it can be kind of a pain to get that seal in there and get it to sit down right and not leak, so seal driver might be a good idea. I always recommend using OE axle seals for those. And that's pretty much that. That's that. Great gravy. Much better using a pressing and tool than dropping it on the ground a thousand times. We can do it anyone can. That's right. <laughs> so thank you, Daniel, for coming out and letting us film your face. Absolutely. Appreciate it. <laughs> Absolutely. That wraps up another episode of Snail Racing. Thank you for watching. Please make sure to like and subscribe.